Well, that was a waste of half an hour. But it was character building. I guess. But now to drop all that, just to talk to the girl we're actually hanging out with today. That's right. Dream Daddy, that's another good visual novel. Oh, I still haven't played that. I would prefer to play that over this, actually. Because that game is hilarious and nowhere near as sad. Uh-oh. She's already there. Shit. Alright, uh, sorry, I was just meeting with my other girlfriend. Don't! Oh! Ixnay on the old friend guy! Oh, okay, 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 sorry. Natsuki, I didn't mean it. What's up? Hey. Something other than a school uniform totally threw me off. Normal clothes?! Whoa! Whoa! Japanese school system! <sighs> it's broken. Screw the system. Don't make it feel so awkward already. We still have another... 30 minutes to have it be that awkward. Sputter, sputter, can we just, bang, crack, can we just go and buy die. cupcakes at the store? I was really hoping we could. <sighs> I think it'd be really funny. Just all of our workload done in like five minutes. I know, right? So we can just hang out and maybe read a book or two? Paint, perhaps? Maybe we could get a Kindle, put the book on the big screen. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'll have, I'll have, have one. Yeah, have a donut before we start making cupcakes, you know? That's good. Mm. I got the supplies, Natsuki. Well, Ooh. judging by our kitchen, we don't have any ingredients. We barely even have a fridge. And there it is over there. Wow, I live alone? <laughs> B uh, yeah, right. Unless my parents are loaded. This is the whole thing where they're always away on business trips. They left me with half a million yen and said, Careful out there. A small loan of one million yen. Whoa! All right, Mom and Dad, you rock. Sorry. Since when did I need to be a gentleman? All the time, asshole! It's not even about being a gentleman, just be a decent guy, come on. <laughs> or, yeah, just a decent human being would help. It's like, hey, can I get you, can I get you a drink? Uh, you want to have a seat, maybe, perhaps? Or... T take your shoes off, take a load off. What did you bring? A book bag full of books? Yes. Oh, her. Well, what did you bring? Are you, are you impressed by all my books? There's a lot of books. That's a lot of books. I am impressed. You brought a soldering iron. Why did you bring 17 pounds worth of feathers? Don't ask. What's heavier? 17 pounds of bricks or 17 pounds of feathers? It would be the bri- Hey, wait a minute! Uh, you almost had me there! You jerk! Ha <laughs> ha Ow. <laughs> I could feel my ribs breaking. My, sh my breath got short. Everything got dark around me. I just coughed up blood. Oh, she secretly has a fist of the North Star. <laughs> Hokutodo Natsuki. <laughs> yes. Eh? Um. Uh, it's not like I hate it. I just absolutely loathe every waking moment that I am small. Not? You know, um. How tall are you again? 6'4. Yeah, I'm like, uh. Five, eight. See, I never make fun of people for their height, because that's wrong, and so many people can make fun of me for my height. So... Well, because you're tall, you can just step on them. That's right. I could destroy anybody, because I tower over them. But there's no point in making fun of people's height. I never understood that. Especially if they're my size, but they're in crotch shot vicinity. Or Natsuki here, who comes up to, like, what, my knee? She's so short, I think she comes up to my elbow. <laughs> Very tiny girl. Small, insignificant ant. I shall crush you! Antsuki. 
Okay, maybe I do understand this making fun of height thing, but I won't do it because it's not. Because you're a good person, you wouldn't do that. That's right. Unless if people are joking, you know, already, and you just join in because it's good natured fun. Yes. And as long as they understand that it's good natured. Ain't fun. that right, you tall, tall, big, tall, son of a bitch, tall thing guy? How's the weather up there, Goliath? <laughs> Yeah, pretty great. We're in the basement of your house, but uh, you're actually on the first floor with how tall you are. <laughs> wow, this is a great mic setup. <laughs> I'm so glad I can see the footage and the audio and everything. <coughs> so glad I can hear you dying right next to me. You know what? You were mentioning Anime Plague. Maybe that's what we caught after the first recording session. Yeah, this is the um, second session we've done. And uh, we got apocalyptically terribly sick. Yeah, within as the, soon after we, yeah. we we left for the day. Absolutely immediate death syndrome. So we still got a little bit of that lingering. Mm -hmm. But uh, enough to go through this. Hey, uh, hey, you, you know how days go by faster when you have something you're looking forward to at the end of the day? Uh-huh. Papers pleases after this. Yes. Well. And then maybe anything else. Can we just maybe... Uh, go? Oh my god, people complain. Stop, stop, oh, no. stop, stop, oh, stop. No. Oh my god! What happened? Why? And I guess how much we missed? Nothing! We probably didn't miss a fucking thing because we're not making cupcakes! There's no books! There's no cupcakes! There's no friendship! There's no nothing! Why are we doing this? <laughs> uh, because... There's just nothing! It's just talking with girls! That's not even good, meaningful conversation! What kind of character development is this? I mean, about the only thing I know about these girls is that one girl has fucking depression. <laughs> and even then, that was diminished by the fact she's like, um, er, uh, well, we dance around that subject for fucking ever. Why are we playing this? Let's go, please. I'm gonna open up another book. Here, pick, here, pick, pick a book. I'll read something from it. Actually, anything, anything. Pick the anything. one that makes you in your happy place, man. All right, I'm gonna go back we're, to the we're pillow. We're getting there. I'm, it is getting there. I'm I going swear. back to the pillow book. There's, there's plenty of good stuff in the pillow book here. Let's see. Uh, bu -bu -bu -bu. The batter's going in the in the oven soon, so I need to fill the trays. All right, I'll start from the beginning of the pillow uh, book. Go right That's ahead. <laughs> is, this the, is this the sexy one, or are they all pretty much like that? Uh, actually, this one is about the, the seasons. <clears throat> oh, okay. In spring, the dawn, when the slowly paling mountain rim is tinged with red and wisps of faintly crimson purple cloud float in the sky. Those are, you know, good things. In summer, the night, moonlit nights, of course, but also at the dark of the moon, it's beautiful when fireflies are dancing everywhere in a mazy flight. Mazy flight, I like that. And it's delightful, too, to see just one or two fly through the darkness glowing softly. Rain falling on a summer night is also lovely. In autumn, the evening, the blazing sun has sunk very close to the mountain rim, and now even the crows in threes and fours or, <clears throat> or twos and threes, excuse me, hurrying to their roost are a moving sight. Still more enchanting is the sight of a string of wild geese in the distant sky, very tiny. And oh, how inexpressible when the sun has sunk to hear in the, glow in the growing darkness the wind and the song of autumn insects. In winter, the early morning, if snow is falling, of course, it's unutterably delightful. But it's perfect, too, if there is a pure white frost, or even just when it's very cold and they hasten to build up the fires in the braziers and carry in fresh charcoal. But it's unpleasant, as the day draws on and the air grows warmer, how the brazier fire dies down to white ash. This is that, uh, mono no aware, the oddest of things. This is, like, completely, 100% indicative of that. Hmm. Pillow book's great. Just, just, just musings that she wrote down from day to day. Yeah, I think you might have to find another passage. Gosh. We're still talking about fucking cupcakes. Alright, let's, uh, look, okay, let me just go ahead and go. Uh, here we go. Uh, situations you have a feeling will turn out badly. Ooh. A son-in-law who has a fickle nature and tends to neglect his wife, and who now hasn't visited her son for some time. Someone given to lying nevertheless makes himself out to be capable and dependable, and is given an important task to undertake. A boat with sails raised high in a strong wind. Someone in their 70s or 80s who's been ill for some days now. Oh, uh, what else we got? Yeah, that was a bit of a short one. 
A place where a lady lives alone, in a badly dilapidated dwelling surrounded by a crumbling earth wall, the garden pond full of water weed, and the courtyard if not literally overrun with wormwood, at any rate with patches of green weeds showing here and there through the gravel, is a truly forlorn and moving sight. There's nothing more boringly unromantic than a place where the lady has got down to business and had everything repaired and smartened up, meticulously locks her gate each evening, and generally keeps the place run in punctilious fashion. Are we, are we cooking yet? Yes. Good. Don't make me beat the crap out of you. Oh no. I'd like to see you try. Stop! I was joking! I was joking! Well, that'd be, uh, that'd be a great character moment, wouldn't it? You find out that she's actually a uh, green belt in judo? I'd like to think she started her own fight club outside school. <laughs> Rule number one you don't talk about Doki Doki Fight Club. That would be awesome! I'd be down for that! Edward Norton, senpai. <laughs> yes! I love it. There's a big glob of icing on Natsuki's cheek, so I don't say anything. Lick it off, twin senpal! <coughs> I was just about to say, so I just go and go... <laughs> Stop! Stop! I don't want to do that to Nobuo's ass, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Put my own icing on his cheek, you know what I'm Shut saying? Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> oh god, we're throwing icing in each other's face. Aha, I've got your wrists. What are you going to do? What the hell? What did we just do? Slam her up against the wall. Fucking quit it! Ooh, what if we were obsessive-compulsive? And this is actually us fighting back the urge to kill. Alright, one cup of flour. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Two cups of milk. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I would just like to see if we were like the anime version of Monk. <laughs> and, but we would secretly like, if she put like one particle of flour incorrectly, it would just set us off. It's like, what the fuck did you do? The fuck did you do, Natsuki? Put it back! Please. Are we using bleached flour or whole wheat flour? Maybe we're using the type to make gluten free cupcakes, which enrages me. She gets a bouquet of roses. Wait, what flour? I don't think she's that stupid. I hope not. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give her the benefit of the doubt here. So what do you think? Are we pushing her up against the wall, or is she on the floor? I don't know. Uh, let me go ahead and see if I can't, you know, re recreate this and grab your wrist here. Right, so, yeah, so, yeah, so. yeah, I mean, well, um, I mean, I could go either way, but I doubt you're overpowering me anytime soon. Yeah, well, well, well yeah. Well, if anything, you'd be grabbing my wrist because I'm about Natsuki's size and all that. So, Get the so, fuck here, off! Here, 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 try me. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Where, where'd the icing go? <laughs> we, we licked it off her finger. Ew! Ew! We put Ew! We put her finger in our mouth and oh, got rid of it. Ew! That's oh my god! <laughs> hey, I know where your fingers have been, bitch. What the hell is that face? Stop! I'm getting tons of thumbnails out of this. It's great. <laughs> uh, thumbnails, yeah, because we you know with the finger and the Oh, God! Didn't even realize what I said. What the hell is this game? Told you things get weird later. Just make some cupcakes! No, Why cupcakes... Why do you have a fucking moment? Making cupcakes is so hot, dude. Uh, you have no idea. Clearly, you know, all the porn I look at has to do with cupcake making. Shut up. Well, actually, that might be more interesting than what's going on here. Just have it be a porn game, for Christ's sake. How do you know it's not? How do I know it's not, exactly? Well, it says you gotta be 13 to play this, not 18, so... Oh, right, right, right. And it's on Steam, so... Well, yeah, well... St didn't Steam let, like, Something one game Something burning?! Go? Oh, by the way, we were messing around so much that the cupcakes burned. What the fuck?! <laughs> Can't do anything right! Oh, wait, we left a tray in there. Okay, never mind. Maybe they didn't burn! Hey, Twin Senpao, you're a fuck-up. Sort of a pizza. 
pizza, Netflix. Sounds like a great night. We'll call Sayori and bring her over, too. That's right. More the merrier. In fact, let's invite the rest of the literature club. Why don't we just do that? Why I, don't we do everything together? I can sit in the middle of the couch, and everybody else... You idiots just... don't know what it means to be a club. They don't have the fucking teamwork. Let's go teamwork and then gunfire. Just like that. Bang, 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 bang. Everybody's dead! What happened? Doki Doki Ammo, ammo Club. Oh, no. Doki Doki Rifling Club. I was just about to say Doki Doki NRA Club. <laughs> <laughs> don't take away our guns, Natsuki. Sire is a filthy liberal. We don't want her in our club anymore. <laughs> I'd rather get shot dead by my own gun than give you my gun, government. Uh, I love rotting flesh. I love just uh, cutting out to where the cupcakes are done automatically, you know? I would have put a mini game there, perhaps. That could have been interesting. I would have liked that. Don't let it burn while you're pushing anime girls to the floor. I wonder if that's been made yet. It's like Cooking Mama, but really terrible. Cooking Mama mixed with Street Fighter. Dude! Yeah, man. Dude! It's like, boo -ah, ooh -ah, ooh -ah. <laughs> Great! Even better than Mama! Blanca, you're good at cooking. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Oh my god, we're still icing. Uh, uh, go ahead and read another passage if okay, you got one. Alright, uh, let me go ahead and fix something. I'll read from the Tale of the Heike this time. Okay. Retelling, let's see if... Now, which one is this again? This is the uh, war fable about... Uh, not the fable, it's uh, retelling... Uh, let's see. It's the end of the, of the 12th century. It's the uh, Taika Reform. It's pretty much uh, the uh, the end of the Heian era. It was a uh, war between the uh, the Heike, the, the Taira, the, the House of Taira, and the Minamoto or the Genji, which is the Minamoto clan. They got into a war, so let's just uh, see if we can get to one here. All right, how about the old horse? Okay. Read this one. Munemori said Yoshiyuki, the Aki assistant director of the stables of the right, as a messenger to the Taira lords. They tell me Kuro Yoshitsune has already routed the force at Mikusa and penetrated our lines. The mountain sector is crucial. Please go there, all of you. But every one of them asked to be excused. Then he dispatched a message to the Noto governor Noritsune. I know we have called you on time. Um, I know we have called on you time and again, but won't you please go? Noritsune's answer was reassuring. If a man wants to succeed, to succeed in battle, he must think of nothing else. He will never win a victory if he is like a hunter or a fisherman, always looking out for comfortable situations and avoiding inconvenience. I am perfectly willing to be sent into danger any number of times. You may rest assured that the foe in one area, at least, will be annihilated. The delighted Munimuni sent him 10,000 riders, led by Ichu no Zenji Morotoshi. Taking with him his older brother, the, Echi the Echizen governor Michimori, Noritsune established defensive positions in the hilly area, that is to say, the terrain below the Hiyodoro... <laughs> Hiyodori Goe track. Michimori had someone bring his wife to Noritsune's camp quarters so that he might bid her a final farewell. I was sent to this front because it was considered dangerous, and danger indeed confronts us. There will be no time to take up arms if the Genji drop down from those heights now. Even if a man holds a bow, he will get nowhere unless he fits an arrow to it. Even if he fits the arrow, he will do no good unless he pulls the weapon. And he is as freck and if he is as feckless as you are, he will be of no use at all, Noritsune said in a fury. Michimori may have felt that the rebuke was deserved, for he hastily donned his armor and sent his wife away. At dusk on the 5th, the Genji began a slow advance toward Ikuta no Mori from Koyano. Looking out in the direction of Suzume no Matsubara, Mikage no, na uh, Mikage no Matsu and Koyano the Heike could see where the enemy bands had set up camp and lit beacons. As the night deepened, the fires resembled stars in a cloudless sky. The Heike, not to be outdone, went through the motions of lighting their own beacons at Ikuta no Mori. With the approach of dawn, the distant blazes were like the moon rising over the hills. For the first time, the Heike understood the full import of the old lines about marsh fireflies. The Genji went about their business with deliberation, here pitching camp and resting horses, there pitching camp and feeding horses. The nervous Heike expected an attack at any moment. 
At dawn on the 6th, Yoshitsune divided his 10,000 riders into two forces. He sent Toi no Jiro Sanehira with 7,000 riders towards the western approach to Ichinotani, and he himself circled around from the Tanba Road at the head of 3,000 riders, with the intention of descending behind the stronghold from the Hiodori Goe track. The Hiodori Goe area is notorious for its perils, the warriors all said. We are ready to be killed in battle, but we have no wish to fall to our deaths. Surely there must be someone who knows these mountains. Hidayama no Mush... Ah, God. Hidayama no Mushadokuro Suishige of Musashi came forward. I know them. You were reared in the east, said Yoshitsune. You cannot know western mountains you have never laid eyes on before today. I don't think you mean that, Suishige answered. Poets understand the blossoms at Yoshino and Hats Hatsuse. Men of valor understand what is behind an enemy stronghold. It was an arrogant-sounding speech. Beppu no Kotaro Kiyoshige of Musashi came forward next, a young man of 18. My father, the monk Yoshishige, told me, when you lose your way in the mountains, whether because of an old, uh, whether because of enemy assault or during a hunt, you must toss the reins over an old horse's neck and drive them ahead of you. Then you will always come out onto a path. Excellent advice, Yoshishige said. The classic tells us, even when snow covers the plains, an old horse knows the way. He put on a gold-mounted saddle and a polished bit on an old whitish roan, tied the reins, tossed them over the animal's neck, and drove it before him into the unknown mountain fastnesses. Very good. <laughs>